All right. Hey, Pranav, how are you doing? I'm doing good. How about you? Um, I'm doing good. It's a nice morning. Um, I think finally the winter is getting the winter. The summer is getting over. So that's good. It's been very hot. Hello. Mm -hmm. yep. Hi, Sai. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining. All right. Let's just wait a little bit more for more people to join. Hello. Hi, Pranav. <laughs> yeah, hi, Abhinav. <laughs> Hola. All right, all right. We're getting more people. Awesome. Yeah. Hello. This is Losanda from South Africa. Awesome. Thank you for joining. Really appreciate it. Kiran. So we are getting again. people. Yes, yes, for sure. All right. A lot of people, a lot of people. Hello. Hey, Jerry. Nice to see you here again. Hi, Gopala. And Ryan. Hey, Ryan. All right. Awesome. Full house now. <laughs> All right. When was the last time you did a live stream, Pranav? Yeah. I guess it was uh, quite a long time before uh, the last year uh, that we did on the data wave uh, expressions and we were trying to figure out like what exactly does this particular function ex actually exist and what exactly is doing uh, over there and we were just trying randomly to uh, do some stuff and where exactly we can use uh, on the fly we were trying to understand uh, where exactly that can be used uh, in the uh, actual life use case. So it was quite a fun over there. Yeah. yeah. But now it's like uh, we have a topic <laughs> for a change. Yes, yes, exactly. All right. Sounds great, Pranav. Thank you. So maybe for some of the people that don't know you, you can just tell a little bit about yourself. How did you become a mule mentor? And how much have you been in the mules of the ecosystem? Uh -huh. Something like that. Sure, sure. So I am currently working as a integration lead in um, tech systems, and uh, I've been working on MuleSoft from past three and a half years. And uh, I've been as a developer, support, uh, lead, as well as the architect designing. So all kind of stuff I'm been doing in the uh, various uh, things. And as part of the community, I am uh, writing a couple of blogs uh, over uh, on the Medium as well as on uh, my own blog site, which is the disciplemiddleware dot in. Uh, you might have seen multiple blogs coming up. Sometimes I do the, the live stream with, again, Alex. So uh, that's all uh, brief about me. All right, cool. So let's get started then. What are we going to learn today? So today we will be trying something regarding the object store. And, uh, and there is a... Uh, in-memory database called the Redis, and we will try to use it uh, and see how the we can replace the MuleSoft uh, original object store with the Redis object store or the Redis database caching. So this will be the overall agenda. Uh, so let me sh quickly share my screen, uh, then we can start over there. Share the screen. should come in a way. Okay. So the, today's topic is uh, using the Redis as a custom object store. Uh, so before going towards the actual one, let's understand what exactly is the object store. So object store is nothing but a utility provided by the cloud uh, wherein we can store the data as a cache or store the states between different processes. Mule components, the application, and uh, 
the multiple application can use the same object store using uh, the REST APIs. So we have a documentation, really good documentation provided by the MuleSoft, where we can learn more in depth about the object store. And the use cases we generally prefer is uh, maintaining the, especially the maintaining the states across the different processes along and uh, uh, caching the data, caching the watermarks wherever required. And now let's, it's just a brief introduction about the objects too. And then what, uh, once we move towards the Redis, uh, this is an again, uh, open source in memory data store, wherein we can store, uh, do the, database uh, key value pairs caching streaming engine message broker so it contains a lot of uh, stack in uh, in depth so <clears throat> so mainly we use it for the in memory database as well as the caching wherein they store the data as a key value pairs and for learning more uh, we can go to the redis.io uh, to understand even in depth like how the redis works where how exactly we can use it in different application but right now our focus will be more uh, towards the views of implementation side. Okay, so let's come on to like, how, what exactly are we going to achieve today? It's like, we will be having a source system. We will be having a backend system. So backend system can be your APIs, your database, anything. So suppose you have a use case in such a way that you want to cache some data and your data is not being uh, changed in the backend system multiple times. So you can use the object store for that and cache your data in the uh, MuleSoft, applica uh, MuleSoft application using the object store. Okay, so, but now if we want to use another object store, which is not in-house from the MuleSoft, what all options we can have? So there comes the Redis and we can replace the object store with the Redis uh, database. Okay, so let's move on to the next one. Oh, so now all the slides are over. Let's ditch them and go actually towards the hands-on, like how we exactly can achieve this part. So let me quickly open the... So let's start with the fresh, completely studio. Switch the work space, create a new one. Let's name it, let's say live stream. I hope everyone knows like how to create a new workspace and new application, new project. It will be the pretty everyone we do it, but still uh, let's start from the basics. So meanwhile, the So for the Redis part, we have two different options available. One is you can download the this using the Redis Cloud. So right now we will be using the Redis Cloud to demonstrate uh, the, how the object store can be created and being used. Reason being because this with this way we can deploy our code to Cloud Hub and see how the actual functionality works for the Redis. So my studio is open. <coughs> and if you want to and sign up uh, for the new um, account therein you just need to mention the first name last name company and the uh, details and you need not to provide any credit card and uh, then you will be provided with a one database with 30 m
fill will be using to uh, experiment more on the uh, Reddit stack. Yeah, so now we are back towards the application. So without wasting much time, let's add the module of objects to Let's go towards the uh, usual practice of uh, adding directly in the POM. Let's do result V2. for it to load yeah object store is available for us let's go back and let's start with storing some data to the object store okay so now for the storing of data we need an http listener let's go to the connector configuration http listener and I'm just keeping all the values at default, providing the base path as OS and path as store. Now, so let's do one thing. Okay, so for storing the keys, let's create a sample payload as key. Which means it can be any value. Like, what should we say? We have soft. And value we will keep as. So this will be our input payload. Swing the keys. Okay, so for that, we will just keep payload dot. For value, it will be payload dot value. Create an object store first of all. Now configuration reference OS config function. Okay, so right now we have not included any Redis adapter or Redis connector, I would say, so that uh, we are not seeing any configuration available for the Redis. So to get those configuration, we need to in, uh, include Redis connector in our form as a dependency. Then only in this configuration, we can see it. So let's first create a normal connect connection. OS. Okay. So let me create another one, which will be nothing but using the same configuration with the path as directory we'll use it as history and 
using retrieve all check store OS configuration is ready. So this one the flow will be we will be calling this ready store. This was so now let's run it just for us understanding whether we are able to get it and store the keys and fetch the data for the normal object store. So this is how we generally do with the object store and uh, store some keys, key value pair, and retrieve the, retrieve those those values and process further as required. So let's start with the basic fundamentals and then we will uh, move towards the how we can replace the object store and start using the Redis uh, store. I hope I should not, uh, not be getting any errors. Uh, let's cross the fingers. I think even if you have errors, it's fine. We can troubleshoot. <laughs> yes, yes, but I have not done much of the things, so I don't want to have any errors in the very beginning. Yeah, so we are good. We have, are able to deploy the application. So let's test it out whether we are able to post something or not. Kp local post. 8081 slash os store and with the body we will be giving the raw data of as a json i think using the same payload and now send it okay so we are able to store it let's see if we are able to retrieve the data Post local store instead of store retrieve all. Oh, we get it. Okay, so now we have got the data, but it's in a different format, most probably a Java format, which we have to convert it back to JSON. So let's have a transform message and Instead of application Java, keep it JSON. Let's make it simple. Let's do a soft preload. started let's check out the retrieve yep now we are getting the data so we are able to get the data as well as we are able to store the data now the main thing the our main topic using the redis so before we use the redis we have to set up our redis uh, server I, there are two options available one is either we can use on-premise that is, and download the completed uh, stack, run it on our local machine, connect it through that, and then it will start working as expected. Another option is, which will be a bit easy one, that is to use the Redis Cloud. So right now I've created a cluster and a database. So with the Redis, Redis Cloud, we have uh, some limitation like 30 MB of data, there are uh, the maximum connections are limited. So <clears throat> there are certain uh, limitation, but for our kind of a testing part, we can definitely use the Redis Cloud instance. And moreover, we can see how it 
works or how it behaves when we deploy this application on our cloud hub so right now we have an uh, we have a uh, cloud hub environment also so let me deploy this particular application meanwhile we will start configuring our redis uh, object store as well new redis store okay so once we go to our redis cloud let me log in okay so you have to go to your you have to create a free subscription based one database you can go there and there you will get the public endpoint this you need to copy this will be the host and after column there will be a port number and once you scroll down you will get the default user password this you need to copy to the notepad and we will be using the same password while configuring our uh, redis database uh, sorry redis object store okay so there is another application which you can download from the download center uh, that is called the redis another redis modules redis inside 2.0 and this can be used to uh, as a it can act as a client wherein we can see what all the keys has been inserted, which has been deleted, or which has been what are the complete uh, usage of that one. So I have already configured it. So if you have not configured, all you need to do is add the Redis database. Here you need to provide the host, the port, uh, alias, as well as the username and the password. So now the username will be the default and the password will be the one which we are seeing here. Yeah. So username is default and the password is the one you can just copy it. I'm not going to show uh, since it's a uh, secretive information we should not be showing on the live stream. So it's, it will be just copy and the paste part. Okay, so the project has been exported and we can just go and deploy it to the Cloud Hub 1. Uh, normal OS, object store. Mm. So, name is not available. Green one. Use the file. Upload the file. Documents. Okay, so while our application is getting deployed. So now we have got all the information which we require for uh, accessing the object store. So let's go to our Redis connector. Similar way, we will just pull the XML support and the Maven support. version as 5.4.2 now it should start adding so now the redis connector is added okay so earlier i was showing that we were not getting any configuration information let me open again now we have got multiple earlier we were getting only the connection and the null. now we have got the cluster not cluster and sentinel so uh, the one which we have got as a that is cloud version this is a non-cluster environment so we will be using this a uh, configuration for the non-cluster wherein we have to specify the host we copy that we already copied it host and port and the secretive password once i do a test connection it's 
so let's open the database as well this yeah, connection is successful so i'm just changing the name that is config okay so we have to change the config here as well now after doing that there is no other change which is required So that is the configuration which is required to do for configuring a Redis object store. And it should work as expected. I have not saved it so that it should not reload. So meanwhile, this is also deployed. Let's check it out. Uh, how this behaves once we deploy it on the cloud. Okay, let's see the object store. The partition, OS, keys, mules of, and the value. It's been stored. So, right now we will not be able to see the complete details, but yes, this is how the <coughs> data will be. Uh, Store in the object store, and we can use the different REST APIs provided by the MuleSoft uh, to use it in a different application. But what if we have to? We don't want to use this object store. We need a separate object store which we can configure. We can make sure like uh, all the clustering, all the information. We want the more control on the underlying layer. So there comes the Redis uh, database, and we will be using now that one. Okay, so currently let's start. Let's run it on the local. There's a question from Ryan. So it looks like one reason you would want to use Redis is that we can look into Redis from the outside. Yeah, that could be one of the reasons, but uh, when you want like more control over the infrastructure, underlying the infrastructure. So right now, the object store, which is being given by the MuleSoft, it, the MuleSoft manages that. But in that, in our case, we will be having more control over the Redis uh, database. Like how if we want to restart, if we want to increase the uh, clustering, all the uh, all the things we have to manage on our so the operability increases and control also increases. But when we go towards the object store in the MuleSoft, then we are bound to use only that part and we don't have access to underlying hardware or the software, how the MuleSoft is actually uh, interconnecting to different uh, <coughs> layers. So in this case, you have more control over the underlying layers. And not only mm -hmm. that, uh, we have a different console altogether wherein we can see which uh, has been uh, anything has been added or done something like that. Uh, so let me check it out whether we are able to see anything. Oh, right now I have to trigger a request. Let me duplicate the tab. Local host. So pick one. Yep, so it has triggered and hopefully it should get the data. Yep, so now we can see the data has been inserted and this is a kind of a Unicode format. Let me check if we can convert it to something else. Let's see. Binary. It reminded me of some old days in uh, college. Very, very, we used to see the a lot of zero ones, zeros and ones. So all these things you can check it out. And generally it will, it's good to see in the Unicode. Like this is how the data is being stored as a different class. Some metadata information is there. But actual value is this one, the community. So we want to retrieve it. So right now we have stored, let's retrieve it. 
Yeah. So we are able to retrieve the value as well. There is no difference in the input and the output values, whether we are using the object store provided by the mule sort or we are using the object store externalized to the mule sort. So earlier we were using the uh, object store when we are running in the local, we are using a file based uh, object store, which is created at the runtime deployment. But when we migrate to the uh, cloud hub, it will be underlying a lot of different services which will be interacted by, uh, uh, say, uh, hidden under the layer of object store. So that is one thing. So let's see. So that is console metrics. You can see like how the different latency. So all these things you can check it out on. Uh, the console provided by the Redis, how uh, uh, the latency was. And this can be really helpful to understand whether uh, it's coming under the uh, use case which we have, that whether the latency is more or less, and if there are any network glitches, where exactly we can uh, work more to increase the performance of this object store. So this is, again, a controllable kind of a scenario where we have more control. So there is one thing. Now let's deploy. So we have seen that normally that we are able to insert, we are able to extract the data from the object store, the Redis cache or database. So let's do the same thing on our cloud. So let's export it. So I'm just changing a name to what should I say? Let's create another application. It is source. Choose file, import, upload. Zero point one deploy application. Okay, let's wait for it to deploy. So, meanwhile, let's add some more keys. Should we add? I leave and then straight. Let's do something else. What are the Oh, great. I built in some wrong area. Let's refresh it. So we are able to use the same. Okay. Let's wait for it to deploy. So there is another benefit uh, of this particular object store. That we will come later. Let's try it out. Let's have this one be complete. Are you using Cloud Does Hub? Do we have any other questions? Uh, sorry? Are you using Cloud Hub 1 or Cloud Hub 2? Uh, right now, I'm using Cloud Hub 1.0. I will deploy another application on Cloud Hub 2.0 as well. And that's all right. Just like curious. I was just doing some. Yes, yes. So right now I'm just doing on Cloud Hub 1.0. So for the next thing, I guess we will be using the Cloud Hub 2.0 as well. Okay. So 
this is deployed. Let's try it out. First of all, try to retrieve everything. Wait a bit. Yep. What are we trying, uh, doing? It's live streaming and the meals of community. So we are able to get the details from Redis store. Let's push some data as well. My favorite one. Hello. Yes. For any person coming into the development, this is the first thing which he or she will make. Hello world. Just print the hello world. So let's see if we are able to fetch. Yep. We are able to fetch and we can see here. Yeah. Okay, so now there will be a difference. When we go to our object store here, we will not see any object store. Because now we have externalized. So our object store is not lying within the Mule application or the Mule soft or any point platform. It is outside the any point platform. And from any point platform, we cannot see what the keys are being stored in that particular object store. So now we have to manage everything on our own. So it's I mean, hello in the world. Okay. Now, there is the one, the other benefit which I was saying. That is, what if we deploy another application, the same application which is using the same object store, same configuration? Will it be able to do, or do we need to do any changes? Do we need to use any APIs or no? The answer is no. We don't need to use any API. We can use the same configuration in some other application and use the same Redis database to insert the keys and retrieve the keys. So that will be having an additional benefit because in the other case, when if we want to use the object store created by some other application, we have to go through the REST APIs. But in this case, you can directly configure the same configurations and uh, store and retrieve and use the same exact same database. So now let's do one thing, create a uh, application on Let's have the same and upload the file. I'm using the same jar and deploy. So now we are deploying on the shared space in Cloud Hub 2.0 with the same configuration as point one we call one replica. This I should select, but it will not matter anymore. Will take some time to deploy. So, meanwhile, let's see if there are any questions uh, for us to answer. Yep, all good. Okay. The one thing which I saw differently, like uh, when it's written on the in the logs as well, when we deploy in any, any application on Cloud of 2.0, the name is not exactly the name which we give as an a, for the API. It's a kind of a UUID or a GUID. There's a question now. If we use Redis OS okay. config, did you say the deployment configuration for Object Store V2 doesn't make a difference? No, no, it will not make a difference because right now we will not be using the Object Store V2 uh, in our use case. So we will be directly calling the Redis cache. So even if we are using a V2 or not a V2, it doesn't matter because in the end, the 
request will go to object store. Oh, sorry, Redis database. Yeah, so now it's up and running. Let's use it. Duplicate. Ball. So yeah, we are able to get all the details. We need not to do any changes. The same jar was deployed on cloud of 1.0 and same jar was deployed on cloud of 2.0. And we are able to retrieve the same key, uh, key and value pair from both of them. And even if you want to insert a new one, that also can be done. Just let's duplicate it again. And this next time, from next time, uh, we have to get some sample data as well. Otherwise, we will be keeping keep using uh, random names all together for our uh, testing purpose. So right now, the Iron Man is also there. And if I try to get the details from the same one, retrieve all, I am able to get the Iron Man as well. So the object store is being shared across two applications deployed on two different environments. Um, so that will be there. So there is another question. What if the Redis service goes down? How we will handle that situation? Yeah. So that's again the same scenario. Since we are moving away from the mule sort, so that's not a mule sort responsibility. We have to take care of those servers and uh, since right now we are using a single node, we can use go towards the cluster node, where in one node goes down, we have another node to back it up. But again, these all will be the fail, failure scenarios which we have to keep on uh, checking and uh, maintaining it. Again, depends upon the use case basis and how much a particular uh, organization is ready to spend on the infrastructure and how uh, critical are, are those details if we are not able to capture in the object store. So if they are highly, highly critical, we have to make it high availability. So Redis again provides some high availability, availability clusters and different configuration, which we have to make sure. Okay. So as uh, Ryan asked, about the configuration, let me, before that, if I go to object store again in uh, cloud of 2.0, I will not find anything here. It's again, everything over here. So now we have hello, iron, iron man, what are we doing, mills of all uh, inserted to the database. So there will be no configuration. Let me change it to the object store V2 and apply it. Uh, this part actually I didn't like about Cloud uh, of 2.0 somehow. You do any small changes, you have to redeploy it. The complete configuration gets redeployed. Okay, let's wait for the deployment. Now, uh, it'll take some time. So, here, data access control. And also, you can have different access controls, create a new role, like how the data should be accessed. So, you want to give a full access, read only, read, write. Suppose you have an application wherein you just want to read the data, not to write the data. You can give just the read only uh, access, so it will be getting it. So, here, uh, what I was referring to the controls, not only that, uh, the similar way as uh, we were discussing about the object store provided by the MuleSoft, we have the REST APIs. Redis also is having the REST API, but you have to enable it going to the API keys, access management, yep. Here, uh, I have already enabled it, but there you will get another button to enable the APIs. 
and then you can use it uh, using the REST API. So let's go to the documentation. By the time oh, this is also deployed, so let's test it out. The, which one was there? This one. Yeah, so it will fetch the same details and object store will not be there even though we have checked the configuration as object store v2 but since we are not using any configuration from the object store uh, it will not be shown over here and whether we have object store v2 enabled or disabled it will not make any much difference so when we are using the object store from the mule server then this particular checkbox actually makes the difference Okay, so we are having the REST APIs. Use the API. Authorize, make API request. Okay. So they have a beautiful Swagger UI page wherein you can go and test the different APIs. Application JSON, get logs. Subscription databases flexible. Okay, now the question is where is the subscription ID? Descriptions yep. should be the one. Let's try it out. First of all, authorize. Let me go out from this window. Put the key and the value. Oh, here is the access management. Okay, keys, key name, that is just. So I've done the authorization. Let's see. So the subscription ID should be this one. Four zero one unauthorized. Mm -hmm. API key, API secret key, I got it.
Okay. Where is this documentation? Account key, yes. API. Seems like there is some request you zero response code for zero one responses. Okay, I guess uh, I need to some debug it. So basically, we can use the uh, various keys and uh, do the similar operations and also fetch the logs. A lot of uh, things we can do with the API. So again, if we start exploring, it will be a really, really long call. Yep, yeah. so now the time is for any open queries or questions. Uh, I don't see any questions yet, but yeah, if anyone has any questions, please send them in the chat. Um, in the meantime, this was great, Pranav. I didn't even know that we could do this <laughs> with Redis, so that's cool. How did you come to do this, by the way? Was, like, was there a requirement? Uh, no, no, not a requirement. Just a thought, like, uh, what is another way by which we can uh, uh, move away from the obje uh, current object store and it can be reused across various applications? So there I found a document, a really good document from uh, MuleSoft, wherein uh, they were having, let me share that. So they had some uh, use case. So it's like how to use the Redis as a custom object store. And uh, Started and trying different scenarios. So I'm just sharing the link over the chat. I'm not sure whether I can send it. We have a question which will be quicker to retrieve 100k records from new objects of this one. Ah, so that is a really good question, but again, this we have to test it out. And uh, again, it depends upon the hardware configuration, what configuration we are using. So there are many factors involved. So again, it depends. It, Right now, uh, the cluster information we will be having more. Yeah, thanks, Ryan. So, this is the document, uh, a MuleSoft document provided uh, this year. I think you can use the Redis connector. One which I was using was a different kind. So, they were trying to add the configuration in the backend layer, but how you can do it from the front end. So this is the very basic way by which we can uh, use it across. So therein you are, uh, they are having using a re, uh, Docker to run the Redis server and then using it in the uh, local application. But now we have seen the everything on the cloud, everything fully managed over the cloud, but in different, different uh, domains and how we can use it. Okay, so there is another question. Can we use any other DB for caching like MongoDB? Uh, not sure. Right now, I've seen only the Redis cache uh, available. But for MongoDB, I guess we have to try it out. 
whether we can use it or if there is any privilege or uh, provided by the mule soft and we can use and uh, right now the thing is uh, if we go to the back end let me show you one more thing if we sh go to the back end retrieve where is the configuration yeah so Is it frozen for everyone or just for me? Okay. Ah. <laughs> All right. Probably the internet. Hi, Esmeralda. Nice to see you here. Welcome. Yeah, it's all right. It happens. All right. Um, hey. <laughs> uh, so I don't know if he will be coming back, but it's all right. I think we kind of got the main idea of what was happening. Uh, yeah, I don't see him online. Oh yeah, he's online. Maybe he's just having issues. That's all right. Uh, we can wait a little bit. I don't know if there are any more questions for him or if everything was answered, but we can just wait a little bit to see if he comes back. If not, then maybe let me start finishing this up. Remember to follow us on twitch.tv slash mulesoft underscore community so you can see <clears throat> all of our previous recordings, all our schedule in your localized time zone. Oh, he's back. Hey! I'm sorry. <laughs> it seems some uh, thing happened to my Wi-Fi network. I just changed the network now. I'm sorry, like uh, where exactly I dropped off, I don't know. I was just uh, explaining. Yeah. Uh, I don't know where exactly till what I was uh, able to explain. You were just starting to explain about the back end, and that's all. <laughs> okay, okay. So the thing is, right now, uh, let me try to share the screen again. Quickly, I will yeah. not take much time for everyone because we are already time's up. It's all right. Mm, screen. Yeah, so now the screen is visible, right? Yes. Okay, so in this, we have an OS configuration and internal to OS configuration, we have a connection, uh, Redis connectivity details as well. So right now, I'm not sure whether the MuleSoft provides any out of the box solution. The similar configuration can be done for any other uh, document database like MongoDB or something else. If not, uh, you may need to create another uh, wrapper on top of the existing connector and go with the custom connector solution. So that could be one possible way I am thinking of. But yes, again, it depends upon uh, whether the MuleSoft provides any out of the box solution. But for Redis, MuleSoft provides, and we can very well use this for the object store. Awesome. I don't think there are any more questions after that. Um, so yeah, that's great. And you're done, right? Yes, yes, I'm done. I guess I have covered pretty much uh, everything which I thought. <laughs> if anything is there, I guess everyone can uh, ping the questions. Uh, I will try to answer if anything is there. Perfect. Thank you so much. So <clears throat> I was telling everyone to go follow us on twitch.tv slash mulesoft underscore community to see all of our previous recordings, our schedule, and to get notifications as soon as we are live. 
You can also put it on your phone, the Twitch app, and you will receive notifications in your phone as well. So, all right, that's all for today then. Thank you so much, Pranav. This was amazing. I, I feel like everyone learned a lot about this. So I guess next step is to try to do caching in MongoDB because that was a nice question. <laughs> I tried. We can try it out for sure. And all right. The community and I guess someone or the other might be trying uh, while we are just discussing that. Yeah, for sure. All right. Well, that's it. Thank you so much, Pranav, then. I will see everyone this Thursday, so in two days, same time with Ryan, who has been here in the chat all this time. So what are we going to do with Ryan? Um, a point API race. Ooh, interesting. All right. So I will see you then in two days uh, with Ryan. And that's all. And all right, thank you, Pranav. I hope to see you again soon. This is super sure. interesting. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Alex. All right, see you all in two days. Bye-bye.